Can they see me too? Yes, we're live. Hey, everybody. <laughs> um, thanks for connecting with us. Um, the webinar today will talk about uh, unleashing the wine aromas during fermentation. My name is Federico, and I'm the scientific advisor for IB USA. And today on the screen with me is uh, Marisa Webster, that is the sales rep for Central Coast uh, and uh, Tamecula for IB. Um, while we wait to everybody to connect, I just want to say a couple of words on my background. I'm a biotechnologist. I studied uh, industrial biotechnology and beer fermentation and uh, wine fermentation, especially uh, non-conventional yeast fermentation at the University uh, of Adelaide. This webinar is a part of an initiative to stay connected with you during this pandemic. And I think we are ready to go. So the webinar is going to be divided in three different steps. The first step is going to be a brief presentation on an experiment that I did during my PhD at the University of Adelaide. The second part is a pool. If you see below your screen, I prepare already nine questions for you to answer during the presentation or after the presentation. And at the end, we'll go through uh, the answers. And at the end, we will have a um, quick um, uh, answers of your questions. You can write your question on the chat or you can add, write your question on the question button below the screen. I think the total time would be around 30 minutes. So <clears throat> every wine is characterized by a different bouquet because it has different uh, compounds in it. And these compounds could be deriving from grapes or could derive from the fermentation, so from yeast, or could derive from aging and so forth from the wood. During this presentation, we're gonna talk about how you can influence the fermentation derived aromas. So we need to understand what's happening during fermentation. During fermentation, the yeast eat glucose and fructose and other important uh, elements such nitrogen to produce ethanol and CO2. And alongside ethanol fermentation, it produces a, a broad variety of secondary metabolites some of which are <clears throat> very aromatic, volatile and very aromatic, such as esters and higher alcohol. The yeast could also <clears throat> um, take some uh, flavor precursor that are in the grapes and release them and make them volatile. While for some grape flavors, the yeast cannot do anything, and one example are the metoxypyrazine. As you know, uh, if you ferment the same grapes with different yeast, you can obtain different style of wine. So the researcher tried to understand why <clears throat> different yeast produce different aromas. And the first step was to identify which chemical compound are associated with which uh, sensory descriptors. And so they identified the uh, compounds that cause uh, tropical aromas or the compounds that uh, cause varietal expression. And the next step was to identify the genes of the yeast that can promote, so overexpress or reduce this um, uh, aromatic production. And the research showed that for this de novo, biosynthesis uh, arom uh, aromas, the amino acid metabolism, the sugar metabolism, and the lipid metabolism are very important. Also, for uh, the release of the grape uh, flavors, research show that the yeast needs to produce some enzyme to release them for very bounded form. In the particular case of volatile thiols, 
there are two precursors in the grapes, 4-MMP and 3-MH, that are bounded to cysteine or glutathione. The yeast need to produce the enzyme to release them in your wine. And the particular case of volatile thiol is that the yeast then take 3-MH and make an acetate ester of it, that it's called 3-MHA. The sensory descriptor of this compound and are shown on the screen. And as for the uh, de novo compound biosynthesis, different yeast uh, release different amount of volatile tiles. And uh, this, uh, the genetic sequence of the different yeast has been analyzed and the release of volatile tile has been linked to these genes, uh, IRC7, that is a beta sulfur lease that the yeast <clears throat> produce and can cleavage the link between a sugar and, uh, sorry, between the cysteine or glutathione to the volatile thiol. So the aim of this experiment was to <clears throat> see how we can explore this wine yeast flavor spectrum with yeast selection and addition to be able to give winemakers tool to give in the direction that they want with their wine. And to do it, the experiment um, included two different yeasts. One yeast that has been selected to release more volatile tiles because it has the, uh, <clears throat> the IRC7 gene. And one yeast that instead produces a lot of glutathione that is uh, an antioxidant and so it can protect more the volatile tiles from oxidation. Yeah, glutathione is a, very, is a very antioxidant molecule. And another treatment was the addition of an enzyme. It's an enzyme that is characterized by this beta sulfur lease cleavage activity. So it's an enzyme for the release of the tiles. And also the treatment included two uh, organic nutrients addition. Um, one is a, a <coughs> yeast extract and one is the Fermoplast DAP3. And the Fermoplast Tropical is a yeast extract targeted for the tropical um, aromas production. And uh, right now I'm gonna explain you why organic nutrients are, and amino acid based nutrients are very important for wine fermentation. Uh, research show that amino acid are better than DIP to promote fermentation. But there's not one amino acid that um, does all the job. Each amino acid can promote different stages of the fermentation. There's some amino acids that are better for the exponential phase of the yeast. There's some amino acids that are more helpful for the yeast to rehydrate. And there's some amino acids that help the yeast produce more uh, aromatic compounds. In fact, when you give an amino acid to the yeast, the yeast take in the amino acid and take out the nitrogen, and it doesn't know what to do with the remaining of the molecule. And to get rid of it, it produces CO2 and it reduces the molecule to a higher alcohol. It is very aromatic. When the higher alcohol start accumulating, because they're toxic, the yeast detoxify the media, making them volatile. And so uh, condense an higher alcohol to make an uh, acetate esters. And the same things happens with uh, lipids. When become toxic for a cell, the yeast make um, <coughs> ethyl esters that have a broad range of different aromatic compounds and each yeast strain is able to have a, have a different fingerprint for these um, esters. And to study <coughs> the different condition, we tried it in two different grapes. One, uh, I did the experiment at the University of Adelaide, so we used the uh, um, grape from Australia. One at the different spectrum of the tiles precursor, one was uh, um, Sauvignon Blanc, that is high 
in tiles and the other one was Chardonnay. That is low in tiles, but has been proven that maximizing the tile can increase the potential of your wine. So for doing all this condition, we use this uh, robot at the University of Adelaide that can do 100 fermentation shown in the same times. And the condition was control, enzyme addition, low nutrient, high nutrient, first the dab free, low nutrient, high nutrient, the tropical, and the enzyme plus one nutrient and enzyme plus the second nutrient. Everything was in triplicate for two yeast for two varieties. So at the end, 96 different fermentation. And <clears throat> the result of experiment is, as predicted, organic nutrients um, reduce the fermentation time, so help the yeast fermenting faster. Regarding the uh, tile uh, production, the thermal, the Sauvignon yeast was more efficient um, of the other yeast to release tiles. At the beginning, with no, um, no addition, they were pretty similar. But with the addition, clearly the first yeast was more able to uh, release volatile tiles. Regarding the use of the enzyme for free MH in Sauvignon Blanc, we can see that all the treatment with the enzyme that are in yellow uh, have an increased free MH concentration. And in particular, if we see just the enzyme addition, it increased three times the concentration of free MH uh, in your wine. It started at uh, 1,200 and it finished at 3,500. For, free MH, for uh, free MH, the nutrient, we can see that uh, tropical, the uh, organic nutrients, both increase the free MH concentration. However, the tropical was more, <clears throat> had a bigger impact on the free MH production that is quantified again three times more using the nutrients. For free MH, um, what we can see is um, as uh, the concentration increased with the use of the enzymes three times. However, with the use of the uh, nutrients tropical in Sauvignon Blanc, we get a 20 times increase of the free MH A concentration in wine in the final wine. Regarding Chardonnay. If, we, if you see the scale is, uh, is different uh, compared to the one for uh, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay has less precursor, so it has at least five times less um, uh, precursor for free MH. And in fact, the addition of an enzyme could increase the free MH concentration, but this time it increased only for uh, one third more. Uh, the nutrients has the same effect of the enzyme, increasing one third more the concentration of free MH. And in for free MHA, instead we can see a six time increase following the enzyme addition. And again, with the nutrient, we can see that the tropical is the more <coughs> um, effective to increase this. 3-MHA concentration, and we can get a six-time increase of these uh, compounds in the wine. After um, analyzing the tiles, we analyze all the esters and higher alcohols, and we can see in this PCA graph, on the right side, you see all the uh, result uh, of the one yeast, and on the other side, you can see the result of the second yeast. And so the graph is saying that the bigger differentiation that you can get in your wine is based on, on the yeast selection. However, as you can see, the different treatments are not all together, but they're spread on the graph. So it means that you can still influence uh, <clears throat> the aromatic compounds production depending on the addition that you do. And uh, to make it easier, we cluster uh, the ester production based on, uh, um, based on uh, their aroma descriptor. And what, uh, it can, what we saw is that um, 
the enzyme addition did, didn't really influence the um, ester and higher alcohol production, while the nutrients addition really increased all the fermentation uh, aromas and bouquet uh, in the final wine. Again, with the tropical, with, uh, with more of this um, ester production because of this targeted amino acid concentration. So the conclusion of the experiment is the biggest choice that you can make is to select properly your yeast based on of, of what you want to achieve. Keeping in mind that a yeast cannot perform if it doesn't have enough nutrition. So you have to choose your yeast based on what you want to achieve aromatically and what your uh, nutrients, your yang of the, me the media is. The second is that the enzymes can promote the release of um, volatile tiles in your wine. While the organic nutrients, because it's boosting the metabolism on the yeast, is not only giving the yeast a building blocks for creating more esters, but it also um, increasing its production uh, of, you know, for itself of this enzyme, and so it increases the varietal tiles too. So the take home messages from the presentation, if we go back to uh, the wine spectrum is, the first things you have to choose is what base aromas you wanna uh, have. For example, you can have uh, flora or tropical or lime. And second, you can decide which addition depending on what you wanna achieve. You can use an enzyme to increase the grapefruit aromas, for example, in Sauvignon Blanc, with a very grassy grapefruit um, Sauvignon Blanc, or you can use the enzyme to add a layer of complexity in your Chardonnay. I think one thing to keep in mind is the time of addition is very important because if you add early on, you enable the yeast to produce free MHA A. If you put at the end of fermentation, you will have only the free MH. So depending on the time of addition, you can twerk the uh, aromatic compounds that you are producing. Alongside uh, the uh, enzyme, you can instead go decide to go for a nutrient. And the, with the nutrients, you can create a more complex bouquet of tropical in Sauvignon Blanc, or you can try to maximize um, your fermentation aromas if your Chardonnay doesn't have a lot of varietal um, characteristics. And in general, organic nutrients are very good to ensure a, a proper fermentation providing uh, and giving you a healthy yeast. All right, so thank you for attention. Uh, this was the presentation. Um, do you have a question for me, Marisa? No, all right. So um, if I'm gonna, uh, one second. Eh? Stop sharing for a second. If we are gonna There's see a section here where yeah. you can ask questions. Yeah. If anybody has any questions right next to the polls. Yes, so um the timing the question one question is the timing of addition uh, of the nutrients. The timing of addition of the nutrients depends on your nutrients composition. Because as I as I showed you before. Uh, depending on the amino acids that are enriched in your nutrients, um, it can have different positive aff effect on the fermentation. So IB nutrients are targeted for specific physiological state. Um, in general, organic nutrients are better at the beginning of fermentation uh, and at one third of fermentation. So <clears throat> if we are going, uh, um, and see the pool result. All right. So the first one second. The first. Oh, let's make this. The first question was about. Um, the first question of the pool was, where are the tile precursors more abundant? And you voted in the skins, 
However, like there's different precursor in um, the uh, <clears throat> in the grapes, and the free MH is uh, founded in the skins, while uh, um, the four MMP is most found in the uh, pulp. The second question was regarding does bentonite reduce uh, does benton reduce tile concentration? The answer is yes. It reduces uh, tile concentration and you reduce the aromatic compound in your wine. Um, however, the, um, the results are contradictory. And this is because there's a lot of bentonite out there and they have different compositions. This study published in 2017 in uh, American Journal of Enology and Viticulture is, uh, is done with our bent bentonite, pharmaceutical grade bentonite, uh, sodium bentonite, uh, bentogram, and it's showing how if you use it at the end of alcoholic fermentation, it's better for volatile tiles because bentonite can <clears throat> strip out your uh, tiles binding to the precursor. So it's better to have uh, the tile, tile volatiles because the bentonite have a more interaction with the precursor. And this is regarding uh, our bent. The uh, third question is what tile characteristics do you prefer in your wine? And the most what is grapefruit? So grapefruit is uh, the uh, sensory descriptor for free MH. So you should aim for um, uh, uh, release more free MH. The, free, the passion fruit is more related to the free MHA and high concentration of free MHA are responsible for the cut, urine, sweaty uh, aromas. If you want green grassy, actually is not, is not a tile that causes the most green grassy, but it's called exanol. And this compound is a, it has a higher concentration in the skins uh, of the grapes. The next question is, um, which yeast gene is involved specifically with free MH production? And all of you voted for uh, IRC7. However, um, I ask specifically with free MH, and if, if you remember during the presentation, I said RC7 is useful to release 4MMP and 3MH into the media, but after the yeast produce the acetate of the 3MH. So the yeast involved specifically in the 3MH production is actually uh, the esterases of the yeast, and the most functional esterases of the yeast is called ATF1. I got you on this. Um, next question is uh, which non-conventional yeast is a potent tile producer and every of you vote correctly. The Saccharomyces baianus um, is usually a high glycerol producer. The La Chanza thermotolerance is a lactic acid producer, producer is a heterofermentative yeast. It produces lactic acid from sugars, so it helps you reduce your pH and increase your TA, while uh, Torula spora has a functional gene for the tiles and is the yeast that can express it more than others, because it's not only if you have the genes, but it's how much you express it, and Torula spora is very good in express these uh, genes. The next question in which country has more volatile tiles concentration in wine? This was an easy one. Uh, yes, New Zealand. New Zealand has uh, an average higher than any other country. France uh, is the second. Uh, next question is which single variety red wine has higher tile compounds free MH concentration? And most of you uh, voted for Cabernet Sauvignon. However, from uh, uh, the latest measurement, is actually Pinot Noir and Grenache that have the most um, free MH concentration. Uh, you can see that the variation is high, but the average of the Pinot Noir is higher. 
And uh, an interesting study um, that has been done, they spike the wine with these uh, compounds to see the effect on the aromas. And the 3MH free, the <clears throat> free and 3MHA free actually are causing red fruit expression in uh, red wines without the sensory descriptor of tropical or sweaty that you can find in a red wine, in a sorry, white wine. In a red wine, you have red fruit expression if you maximize your tile. And um, yeah, IB has a um, yeast for uh, uh, tiles for reds. And without a lot of fantasy, we call it thermal red fruit. Um, next question is which grape varieties produce the smallest amount of tile precursor? Uh, um, you voted Chardonnay. Instead, the lowest is a Riesling. Riesling has the lowest um, is the lowest producer of this style precursor. However, Riesling is a high producer of terpenes. It is another um, group of compounds of this grape flavor derived. And so the uh, aromas of the Riesling characterized by other compounds. Chardonnay is still on the low spectrum of this, of this production. Um, next question is, which of these amino acids is not related with aromatic acid production? And you voted valine and is correct. Um, Phenylalanine is responsible for 2-phenylacetate production, that is uh, the sensory descriptor is rose floral, and is the amino acid that is enriched in our floral nutrient, organic nutrients, while both leucine and isoleucine help produce isoamyl alcohol and isoamyl acetate for leucine, which are the amino acids that are, in, sorry, that are enriched in our tropical. Uh, um, yeah, so let's see uh, if we have some other question. Is the time? Um, so um, the temperature uh, of addition uh, of the enzyme, it uh, it matter. However, the enzyme is only functioning based on dose, dose and temperature. So if you're working at low, very low temperature, you, can, you should increase your dose. And if you work with high SO2 concentration, you can increase your dose. Um, will, so another question, will cold soak in Sauvignon Blanc increase the green aromatic? Yes, doing some uh, contact, skin contact of Sauvignon Blanc could increase your grassy um, uh, aromatic uh, in, your, in your wine. Um, and another question is, is glutathione produced a substitute for SO2 or using conjunction? So glutathione can be a substitute of SO2. Um, however, um, glutathione has only an antioxidant activity. It doesn't have an antimicrobial activity. Um, yeah, but it's very, it's very helpful for, to protect your tile. So when what we recommend during the fermentation is that once you decided your enzyme addition or you decided or your fermentation is going and you're, you, can, you can see the volatile tiles produced is to add uh, uh, yeast derived produ uh, <clears throat> products rich in glutathione because both of them have high um, antioxidant properties. I think we are um, at the end of this webinar. Uh, thank you for connecting with us. Um, if you have any, oh, I saw an, uh, a question. So Bentogram is the best added possible. Yes, so Bentogram regarding uh, aromatic preservation is best 
to being add at the end of the fermentation. Um, so yes, I was saying uh, thank you for connecting with us. If you have any questions, um, you can contact me or Marisa or you um, um, or uh, your uh, local uh, sales representative. <clears throat> you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can sign up to uh, our newsletter. Please, if I, um, uh, if you want. And Federico about, um, yeah. would it help using two different yeast in the same inoculation? So yes, it's very, okay. it's very famous. It's very famous technique to co-inoculate Torula spora and Saccharomyces or do sequential inoculation, depending on how much uh, uh, fingerprint of this yeast you want on your wine. Um, yes, we're going to share uh, the presentation. If you contact your uh, sales representative, we're happy to share. You can find these videos online uh, on this channel or on our channel on YouTube. Thanks for coming, and it was a pleasure to speak with you. Bye. Ciao, Marisa. Thank you, everyone.